Hello, this is uh, group three. Uh, our name is Christ our names are Christopher, Justin, Mohammed, Ahmed, and Mohammed. Um, and Mike. Uh, so uh, we are talking about power drill. And basically what, what we are doing is we are trying to uh, uh, to create energy out of uh, uh, the uh, energy solar. So this is an alternative way of getting energy uh, without uh, uh, resorting to the same system we have, which is the current system, which is the energy, the electrical energy. And basically here what we are do doing is define basically what, what is this energy, what, how we, we can get it, and the way we will get it. Uh, for that, we created three major parts, which are, the first is, you know, the, the panels themselves, we will be talking about them, then we will be talking about the inverters, and then the third part will be the software, the system that will put all these to communicate together, and uh, basically go from there. Uh, I will let uh, one of uh, the friends be talking about the, the rest of Now I will talk about the smart grids. Actually, the main purpose of the smart grids is uh, to deliver uh, power from the supplier to the consumer using two-way com two digital communication system. Actually, the smart grid is just the, elect the digital version of, of electric grid, which is the, the electric grid is the network that support the following operation. The first operation we call the electricity generation and the electricity transmission and the, the electricity distribution and the electricity control. The benefit of using the smart grids because it is actually can respond to any events that occur in, in the power delivery system and uh, can save mo uh, energy and in fact can save money according to the study of, made by the US Department of Energy that the small grids technology can save them between 47 to 100 billion dollars in the next 20 years. So, and uh, another benefit of using the small grid is, is it it's actually can respond to the errors that can be made by man or by the nature or any distribution in delivering the electricity. Okay, and Del, let me please talk about the design. As Mohammed said, like by solar energy we can save money and we, we can save more money and it's really helpful for the environment. Um, the objective, the smart grid that we can generate and um, monitor the energy that we get from the solar panels and we can like decide how the amount how many power we get and we can learn like how we are transfer power to the solar energy and how we can store it and by smart grid we can switch the power and let's say like it's night time so it can switch to off and we can get like the power from the store that we're gonna make and solar energy is like direct energy. It's not like wind. You know, wind is indirect. No. All right, I'm gonna talk about the inverter. Uh, the inverter will take the DC input that we get from the solar panels and convert it to AC power, which is used everywhere in every household across the world. And uh, the grid time inverters that we're going to use uh, can feed back energy to the distribution network because it it, uh, it can alter it can reduce alternating current with the same wave. So if it comes in with uh, as it changes it to uh, AC power, it'll keep that throughout uh, distributed throughout the entire smart grid system. And uh, the big thing is, but in uh, today's grid, blackouts are a big problem. And uh, they, uh, 
they cause people like cause companies a, a, a lot of money, and the, uh, the smart grid system has the ability to detect when a blackout could or may happen and uh, prevent it, which will save companies a lot of money. The Pacific, the Pacific uh, inverter we're going to use is called a Sony SIG 2500LV. Uh, for our design, we needed 208 volts line to line and three phase. This specific one has a DC rate of current of 16.9 amps. Ours, our uh, design is going to be a little bit more than that, which Mike is going to get into. And it has a very easy interface to work with the computer to easily get the data into the code, into the computer. Uh, this is the start of the solar panels that we're going to use. We're actually going to be using, I think it was 39 individual solar cells. The solar cells will have a 200 watt peak max output from each individual cell. What will actually happen, you'll see later on in the slide, is that we're going to take 13 cells and actually create a cell bank. We're going to series the cells, and then each cell output will actually be around 452 volts, which is around the peak operating voltage for the inverter that Justin just described. Um, good, good, nice. This will be the cell pods that we'll actually put together. This right here was actually calculated to be around 7,500 watts of output. We calculated that high because usually solar is around a 20% efficiency rating and um, what we're actually going to be doing, we're going to have a load that's around probably 1.5 kilowatts. So we had to overcompensate for the um, load is for the inefficiency of the solar, pod, solar cells. That's just a diagram of the cells actually series and shows you what each individual pod looks like. This is just a brief diagram of what we're actually going to have. This will actually be our solar input and our grid input actually going into the inverter. This will be a secondary load that, you know, will be a dump or whatever that the AC will actually supply. And what we actually want to be able to do is take the generator and be able to supply a 1.5 kilowatt max load at all times. The thing we're actually working with right now is with the solar input, we still have to put in our battery backup. But between that battery backup, we're going to put in an automatic transfer switch that actually senses, you know, whenever the solar input can no longer support the system, it will actually run off of the battery backup and support the load. The problem we're running into still is, is with the grid input, we need to actually synchronize the input to where if we have a failure within the solar or the battery backup of the system, the grid still takes over the load in case of any type of emergency. And obviously these are the user interfaces and we intend to actually network the interface after, you know, over a period of time. Um, the software we're going to be reading in in milliseconds, as you're adjusting say, we found a card that we can stick inside the inverter and easily transfer the numbers that we need onto uh, a computer. Excel would just be the way we would transfer it onto there in the numbers. And uh, smart grid systems where everything's set up on networking, it in a much larger scale will have to do even more with that. We'll have to take that, convert it into databases and such that we can retrieve the numbers at different times. We'll also have a way you can calculate it into uh, if you want to read it in different voltage and things like that. We'll be uh, getting the numbers from what's being dumped off uh, that we're not going to be using for the generator, what's the input on the solar energy, and how that fluctuates throughout the system. And we'll, what we'll be able to do is when we set it up in the database, be able to retrieve certain numbers so we'll be able to uh, calculate last week's versus this week's numbers and show the fluctuation throughout it. conclusion we just want to say that uh, we can put these together uh, and communicate uh, with you know putting a software together that has an IP address for every machine that we are using and what will happen then is we can get the information about that particular uh, machine let's say we have a fridge that can have uh, an IP address and then if for example um, 
we are not using that IP address. The system will recognize that we are not using an IP address and therefore it will not give that energy that is not needed. Then when we put it on, the system will recognize that, oh, there is a fridge that is coming with the IP address, which will be a static IP address, and then we will provide the information, the more energy that is needed for this. So, as you see, this is a decentralized system that will work perfect in, 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 in nowadays because the system we have right now are centralized somewhere and then the energy you will get is basically an energy that if something is wrong, you will not be able to find out. Here we have a database, we have a network system that will recognize every item we are using and then with this system in place, it will be really efficient, especially in, the, in terms of practical use. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. Did, you a, did you have a cost estimate for your solar section, the fan section? No, there, there's no cost on it yet. But that's just, also I know, I think usually generally the power company only does like a 60% thing. And I was also going to find out maybe we should, you know, require our load to be at that or the 60%. And then even if we, you know, put it at the 7,500 watts, what would actually happen is, is we still need to be able to have the energy to charge those batteries during the days while the solar cells are conducting. So therefore, then if we did oversize the load, then you know we could sufficiently charge the batteries and have a load to supply from the batteries at night to run what we needed to run. Any other questions? By the way, there is a group in 481 which did a project uh, like this. I think you should. Yeah, it's one of my buddies on that team. So you should familiarize yourself what they have done. Perhaps you could. No, see what they're doing this okay. So anyway, you should know about related projects. Okay, thank you very much.